Welcome back, and we have the amazing Professor uh, James McCann, who's been off doing research. And I posed a question before James came on today, and uh, his website, but we need to listen to his show regularly, jmccsci.com. Uh, the first big question is, and we want to formulate this so people get the, the totally grasp it. you got to grasp the big issues rather than the small ones. Uh, to start with, for example, I hear a lot of uh, fuss and muscle about the idea of Second Amendment right violations. First off, just say no to the government. Go to hell. Tell the government to go to hell. Uh, states need to nullify the federal constitution maybe reform the union. I believe in secession and reformation of the union. We need to get rid of Obama, who's a globalist shill. But those things are aside, and they're really, you know, they, there's the chances of them succeeding in passing state and federal law, and not if Obama tried to actually pass an executive order, he knows he's going to be impeached. So he's going to try to do an administrative fiat and harass the veterans, etc. And we just need to say no, no, and we need to pass lawsuits like we talked about last week with Michael Connolly of the U.S. Justice. But the problem I see is the more I researched into things like Planet X, which is really not a planet at all, but probably a red dwarf star with a orbiting mini solar system. Uh, the things like uh, the uh, work by Dr. Muller that talks about the extinction level events every 25 million years with the passage of a dwarf star through the Oort cloud that brings down a rain of comets. This is the year of the comet, according to NASA, and there's nobody to submit more work on plasma physics on the solar system and the cosmos than Professor McCanny. What happens is you have dialogue with Tier 1 scientists, and you know that back in 1983, there was a consortium of international scientists and government elite that actually made a decision that they weren't going to tell people about things they've been researching right back to Tycho Brahe, the astronomer over a century ago from the Netherlands, that researched the idea of perturbations of Uranus and knew that there was an object in deep space that was causing a change in the orbit of Uranus, and that there were uh, objects in planetoid-like objects or bar- bigger uh, red or brown dwarf stars passing through our, our outer solar system that could perturb and send in comets into the inner solar system. And we know these plasma objects can trigger off major superstorms in the sun, which are probably the most dangerous thing that can happen, which is why the Vatican, with their binocular telescope in, uh, for, in uh, the Graham Observatory outside Tucson, Arizona, run, by the way, by the Vatican, is the most accurate uh, mirrored system for looking at deep space objects like comets in the world. Uh, you're the one that brought all this information forward, not only in this program, but on your program and on John Moore's show. People need to start putting one and one together and understanding that the globalists are saying to the public, go to hell, we want you to die. And they have to understand that the tier one scientists have done something really bad to the public. So, um, so what, what I think is happening is that we need to, uh, we need to understand that the, uh, this, this situation is really out of control. So, uh, Professor McKinney, if you can, uh, if you can uh, kind of answer some of these issues and kind of frame it so we can have a real good dialogue on that, I'd love to, uh, you know, kind of expand on this. Yeah, and the first thing I want to say, and I, I've been covering these topics, you know, just like you for many years, for a long time, for decades, but you are so right that the globalists are running here. They're doing very strange things. Uh, Yes, well, even if a Carrington event happened, which is, by their own admissions, happens every 150 years, roughly. And if yeah. we're due right now, if, if something like that happened, we're not just going to get a telegraph operator operating in, uh, say, a Kansas telegraph office, because that's the only technology that existed back then, getting second-degree burns to his knuckles and the desk goes on fire, or a rail tie goes on fire and they have to get firemen out there because it's going to start a local fire on the rail line. We're going to have... Uh, jets fall out of the sky. We're going to have cars stop on the freeway. We're going to have telecommunication satellites fried. We're going to have everybody's computer disappear and go black. We're going to see equipment even not plugged in go fried because they don't have Faraday cages around it except that they're inside a steel structure. Uh, people don't understand. We're not going back to the, to the Stone Age. The Stone Age, compared to where we're going, if we don't protect the grid and our electronic equipment, will seem like the Sandals Resort. We're going back to something akin to the Ninth Ring of Hades, to Dante's Inferno. This is not going to be a party. And the globalists, that's why they're pushing all these Homeland Security drills, like the Moscow drill for zombie drills. They call zombie UF and UFO invasion, which they're going to do here shortly, which to me is very insulting. It's also called Reiki and mind control. We talked about this yesterday. It was... Alexander Bachman on the live stream channel. And it also is obscene to hear Homeland Security spending millions of dollars on this crazy crap so that they can split the mind of the population to make them think it's all foolish to worry about this stuff. And on the other hand, it's scary as hell. So the people do nothing. They don't even have three weeks of water, food, or even self-protection. And yet, 
If the government will not be there, and they can guarantee you that they are not going to attack the public, and I'm going to say this, that's why the Second Amendment right stuff is way overblown, way overblown. The chances, for example, there's just one example, that they're going to have, after Governor Cuomo passes this law in New York State, they're going to kick down the doors of a veteran, a veteran, any veteran in New York State, and kick his door down because he's a law-abiding citizen with a fully automatic weapon deployed three times in the Gulf, and they're going to kick his door down and take his guns. The chances of those special forces and Delta agents living very long after they do this kind of activity is about as likely as a ham sandwich, as I said before, thrown among hungry Rottweilers. It's not going to happen. They've even pleaded to the governor to say, please don't tell us to do this because we're going to die. And not only they, their families are going to be in danger, and the political officials that force them to do these crimes against the population in violation of the Constitution, and the public government, and I've seen the FEMA manual, has no intentions in their farthest stupid imaginations to attack the public because they won't survive. What they want to do is wait till the dust clears after an extinction-level event, and they supposedly think they're going to survive. And then after six months, then they're going to reemerge and try to, quote, mop up after people have died from starvation, diarrhea, disease, and eventually haven't eaten each other like the zombie apocalypse, which are now bringing this movie out with uh, Brad Pitt this summer. What they're worried about in the zombie apocalypse, if you read the book or watch the movie, isn't the zombies to have their cortex fried with mycotoxic weapons or a cortex-eating version of the rabies virus. What they're worried about is their preppers. People that have guns and food and supplies that can withstand or survive something that might interfere with the globalist survival in their underground lairs and shelters and what they call hotels with the military troops sitting at the top of the air intake vents and their little facilities with the razor-sharp, razor-wired fences. That's why they're freaked out. They're freaked out. We might survive long enough to interfere with their survival. That's the problem. Well, yeah, uh, I was going to mention, uh, Dr. Bill, yesterday my website was hacked. And, no wonder. Uh, You're the one with two people telling the truth. They don't want to hear this stuff, and that's why... People ask me, Dr. Deagle, do you get called up by uh, by the government? Do they threaten you? Do they do anything? No, not a threat. You know why? They know... I'm one of the few people that's 100% real. This is not a manufactured radio personality. This is reality. I work with Special Forces and Delta. I work with U.S. Base Command. I had security clearance, Q level clearance. And I'm not making this up or exaggerating or trying to create a big ego thing. I'm well beyond ego. I know this is the end game. This is not a, not a game. It, it, when things get rough, they might send a black truck down the road to try to grab me and other radio hosts and other people. But when by that time, when that happens, you're going to see, like where I live is Marine Town, I call Oceanside, Vista, San Marcos uh, areas. You're going to see the public rise up. And the only people going to be running anything in this country isn't going to be the military. It'll be gangs and civilian militia. And foreign forces like taking and talking about bringing the Chinese or Russians or foreign troops in is silly. We oh, will kill know, them so fast they won't that. even have they won't even get a second heartbeat before we murder them. They will we will we will kill them so quickly they can't even imagine. The government has no intentions. They know what they want. They're going to get advance notice of what's coming because they've got all kinds of advanced space and other technology. They're going to be in their underground lairs with their hotels sipping champagne and cocktails. They'll have years and years of food with fancy cars and everything underground. They'll be entertaining themselves and living the life of Riley while the world dies above them. That's what they're up to. Yeah, it's really, I like that scene from Dr. Zhivago, the movie, where the, the people are marching in the streets and they get ridden down by horses while the uh, bourgeois uh, are up in the, um, in the, uh, in like a vast party right. and uh, yeah, yeah, enjoying yeah, yeah. life. Right. And the people that I need to understand, and I was one video I watched the other day that talks about, you know, trucks running literally across the country underground. They don't only have truck lanes underground. They got Megalev trainals, tra uh, trains running, Megalev vacuum tra tube tracks traveling at over mock speeds. People need to kind of grasp that the global elite have spent quadrillions of dollars on craziness while we consider ourselves lucky if we even get some horrifying version, Obamacare version of health care, while our military is being nickel and dime right down the toilet. And when we can't deploy our troops to win a war, we put them to deploy them in danger so they come back with their limbs blown off. This is an... Welcome back to the uh, Nutramedical Report. 
And I think if we could backtrack back to 150 years ago, 1859, we'd see the Carrington event would be literally the near passage of a comet. An event that happens that frequently, you can tell, as you mentioned, Professor McCanny, they're freaked out. They won't tell the public because they war gamed it out, and they basically said, we will have the collapse of the economy, we'll have people stopping paying mortgages, we'll have social chaos if we tell people the truth that there's an extinction level event coming. We're not wanting to prepare, though, which will increase the chances of survival of a larger population to survive what's coming. Maybe get away from the coastal areas if there's going to be tsunamis. Maybe be prepared for things like uh, solar-induced blackouts that make nuclear plants go into station blackouts that will cause massive radiation release. And also, by the way, when CMEs happen, they ring the earth like a bell. and The right harmonic frequencies can trigger off superquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis. And the population could do war game analysis and supercomputer analysis to figure where the danger zones would be, but they're not telling any of this information to the public. We have uh, you know, Joel Skousen talking about it in his Dare to Prepare book and giving some basic information, but the principles you give are really important because the globalists are basically trying to spin everything to tell us, don't worry, be happy. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely right. The, the one thing they're very worried about this year are the comets. The reason they are worried about big comets, even though none of these are directly Earth-affecting in the sense that they're going to come really close, they're not going to come within 50 mile, million miles of Earth, but when they pass the sun, yeah. some of them, like the one in November, you've said for the reports in NASA's own trajectory report says it's going to come with 700,000 miles. That's going to be in the inner heliosphere, which means you're going to get a massive explosion of solar coronal mass ejection of quadrillions of tons of plasma and protons hitting, the, uh, and if it happens to be directed toward the Earth, we're going to get really fried. I mean, if it hits even glancing blow, we're going to have a lot of power outages, and it could be spotty. It may not be complete, but it's going to be devastating to different areas of the world, and some of this equipment is going to be gone for years. years. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, there's no way to easily and quickly repair. How do you uh, uh, because just to move the equipment to remanufacture is going to be, uh, you need electricity. I talked to Dr. Isley, who was the head of the Vitamin Cottage, uh, and he's also a Ph.D. physicist. He worked, uh, he set up the uh, World Constitution Parliament Association in the United Nations back in 1958, and he told me over an entire evening exactly why they're putting nanoparticles in the upper atmosphere. And there's three reasons, and I said it on the show, and I'm the only one to, to release this publicly, so I want people to, to recount it. This is plasma physics. The first is they're creating a radiomagnetic mirror to reflect coronal mass ejections from the Earth. It's basically not the um, uh, teller's design out near the inside of the Van Allen radiation belt to reflect uh, coronal solar mass ejections, but inside the upper troposphere at 73 to 80,000 feet. Second, these particles are our nanoparticle barium, which is 10,000 times more toxic than lead to the brain and, and, and various enzymes in the body. Nanoparticle thorium, 1 in 50 thorium atoms, is radioactive. And nanoparticle aluminum, which goes and concentrates in the cotyputamen nucleus and the pineal gland, damaging literally the soul connection to your body. This system is also used as a plasma weapon mirror so they can set up what's called interferometry fields so they can create a plasma explosion over any city on Earth. Within minutes, they can pump the energy up and create an interferometry field so they can make up to 100 megaton or larger explosion over any city on Earth without firing one missile or one bullet. So in other words, there's no anti-missile system that can stop this. And the third reason is what's called torsion field imaging. They actually look through the Earth, have mapped out in four dimensions all of the resources on Earth, right down to various trace elements and exotic elements and minerals and oil and everything. They have an entire map of every resource on Earth, right down to the depths of the deep parts of the planet. So the fact is they know the, the, the presence of every tectonic plate. They know where every resource in oil and minerals is. And the globalists have total access to this, including the presence of ancient underground cities, ancient natural geological formations, etc. They know everything. That's the reason why they put these things in, up in deep space, because they know they can't protect it, and they don't even know how effective it is, so they've been testing. But during the last 10 years, even with the, some of the X and M class or CMEs, they've lost up to one-third of their communication and other satellites, but they won't tell the public that they have redundancy and that a lot of their satellites get fried. They tell our space uh, astronauts if they're in the space station to go in a special CPR compartment because they're getting blasted with cosmic background radiation when the magnetosphere collapses. 
because it's being pushed into the earth and they're already in deep space beyond the radiation protection of the Van Allen radiation belt because even though they're only a few hundred miles above the earth they have no radiation protection because the magnetosphere is gone it's been pushed into the planet and uh, so Dr. McKenna can you answer or can I expand on what I just mentioned here because people need to understand the globalists know this plasma physics they hire the brightest minds to do this but they'll lock them down and compartmentalize them so they won't tell the public and they're putting everybody including the biosphere of the planet in grave danger with their selfishness and their evil intent uh, yeah they, but they're, these people like we were talking about they're running scared because uh, they, you know, their tier one scientists are, are not that good, actually. Because I've dealt with these people. And in fact, they've come out and asked me questions. And the, the end result is in a big event, uh, none of their preparations will be any good, which leaves the globalists exactly in the same state as you and me. Yeah, except for I know that they have underground uh, high-speed uh, transmission lines using ultraviolet and infrared uh, fiber optic cables in the roofs of these underground chambers. The problem is most people don't realize that the lower-level earthquakes all happen in the upper surface of between about 3.5 to 4 or 5 miles uh, from the depths of the earth. In other words, when you get to the surface, you get bigger, you get more and more of these small quakes. And any of these maglev tunnels uh, that are operating that have to ultimately come up to the surface, the chances that they're going to survive even a moderate quake is virtually zero. So you might be down four or five miles in an underground city or two and a half miles, but you're not going to get back out of there. Your maglev tunnel is going to be destroyed and broken like little toy sticks. Yeah, so the that's, problem, that's the thing. That's the problem is they're going to be locked down there like the Morlocks. And they might have supplies to last for a period of time, but best, basically your air intakes, your nuclear reactors, all the other things, your ability to recycle things is going to be screwed up big time if there's a big quake because even though you don't suffer down deep, the maglev tunnels and the uh, air tunnels and the other things that communicate with the surface are going to be trashed. They'll be all fractured, yeah. They'll be all fractured because they're near the surface. The globalists, if they're listening to this, need to get you know, they need to let their natural gut tell them, Bad idea to go to these underground hotels. Even though they got fancy, you, you wouldn't believe what they've spent. It, people, they, their minds would be completely blown if they saw what was going on. When I was at Shriver Air Force Base, Falcon, Colorado, it was, it was like, a, it was like a movie set. It was craziness. They even had a 440 seat theater, two miles underground, at Falcon, Colorado, Shriver Air Force Base, run by former uh, Disney uh, uh, animation engineers. You sit in this giant theater and they explain all the nuclear powers are going to have nuclear weapons and their space space weapons and everything. You're sitting there with your tongue hanging out thinking, oh my God. They spent like bajillions of dollars on all this crap while people are getting denied health care. Our military are told you've got to pay for your laundry overseas. We don't even give proper flak jacks to our military so they get bullet wounds. And we deploy them and won't let them win wars. We let them sit around and act as policemen to get their limbs blown off by IEDs. And we don't stop China from manufacturing the stuff or putting uh, real action against countries like North Korea and the Hezbollah, which we now hire. It's just craziness. We need to stop it. We have leaders that are leading us down the bowels of Hades. Now, I want you to fill in some scientific details here, because you've got some really good YouTube videos out. A lot of people are trying to misquote them, saying that's back in 2006 or 2007. Um, I want to lay out the facts here. Without putting dates, and neither are you going to put out dates, the chances of us having an extinction-level event in the next, say, five years, especially the next two years with solar max coming, is pretty damned high. Uh, the fact of us having a Carrington event, which is due now, of happening, is so high, I can't understand why four years ago when the Congress passed this law and was killed by Rhino Lisa Markowski, the Republican from Alaska in the Senate. It's just nuts that we are getting away with the Congress not dealing with this. This is more important than sequestration, more important than the debt ceiling, more important than any of these things, which, by the way, should be dealt with swiftly, cleanly, and whatever. It's like cutting off a gangrenous limb. And that's why the popularity of Obama is dropping. People are starting to catch on that not only are we going to lose our economy, we're going to lose the public good. We're going to lose the stability of, a, of an empire. We're going to see the fall of a civilization. 
There's a movie coming out in a few weeks' time called uh, Olympus Has Fallen. We're not going to see, a quote, an alien invasion or whatever. <clears throat> We're going to see something as simple as all of a sudden your lights will just go out. And then people say, oh, we lost the power. Maybe the power station went out. And then they'll realize if they've got shortwave radio or ham radio or they've got walkie-talkies or some other way of communicating that, oh, my God, the entire nation's blacked out. And not only mm-hmm. here, but Europe, yeah. Canada. Then... Things are going to get weird. You're going to see yeah. ice melting everywhere. Grocery foods dying, melting in the stores. People freaking out. And within a few days, when they run out of food, because most people have only three days of food, it's going to get so nuts. Why do you think they're doing all this predictive programming? It's because oh. they want to convince in a psychological deep way, with the right and mind control, that we are the zombies. We're the uh, zombies. Dr. Bill. Dr. Bill, I wanted to mention on these videos, these YouTube videos that are put out there, someone has taken my shows from 2004 right. and spliced them together to make it look like I'm talking about a specific object coming into the solar system right now, and that's not the case. I know so that. I want you to clarify that because I know there's somebody out there doing that without your permission. Clarify so what's really going on, and, and or you yeah. don't set dates either, but you know no. that a character like event, most likely just from a comet, is going to happen. doesn't have to be a dwarf star. Just a comet passing close enough to the sun can cause a major superstorm in the sun, and that's sufficient to do all the bad stuff that we're talking about. Yeah, the, and the, the, the point is that the, the biggest thing the globalists are afraid of right now are psychological things. And when these big comets come in this year, uh, and even though they're not going to necessarily come exactly close to Earth and affect us directly... No, we won't have any effects. At, a, yeah. at addiction, at a, at a distance. But the point is, when people look up and see these, that's why they're trying to ruin my name. They hacked my website. They right. uh, A number about a month ago, spaceweather.com started a thing claiming that I was causing Heaven's Gate-type uh, suicide. Uh, oh, no. The, was Space Weather trying to do that kind of crap on you? Remember now, inside, inside the conventional in public media and inside even alternative radio and television are what I call people either unbalanced mentally or they're government shills or they're people that just don't put it all together and have this kind of ego-complex problem where... They don't want to have people even ask better questions. When you present your data, you don't set dates, but you tell them mechanisms. This is a mechanism by which superstorms on the sun occur. They can see it happen. In fact, I think you even have a video clip on your site that shows a comet coming into the sun and seeing the sun like a giant spark, like from a Van de Graaff generator, jump from the sun toward the comet. I mean, duh, this is so simple and straightforward. Shuffle across the carpet, stick your finger near a doorknob if it's a dry day in in wintertime, and you're going to go, and your finger's going to go, oh, that hurt. That's because that's what happens when a comet passes near the sun, period. Yeah, and so, but what the globalists are really afraid of is psychological that people will look up, and what's the first thing that's going to come to their mind? Hey, the globalists don't have control over this thing. The yes. globalists are control freaks, and they, they're they deathly afraid of losing their control. And that comet right. up there is the thing that could do it, and they know it. So uh, here, here I am talking about comets. I'm a scientist. Right. I don't want to deal with all this political BS. Exactly. I, I and the thing is, if, by the way, science. if things broke down, if things broke down, we would have 2,000 city states. We wouldn't have a global empire run by globalist bankers. If no. the power grid broke down, people would survive if they had proper preparations, but you have 2,000 city states. And very quickly, people would start growing food and trying to survive. Yes, there'd be chaos, but we'd find civilian militia rise up. You'd see even the gangs realize that they have to cooperate or they die, too. And what would happen is you'd have city states run by local bosses, if you want to call it. And the globalist control of the world would be would end instantly, and that's what they're totally freaked out. Their satellite based communication, their electronic ghost money, all the yeah, other all systems of, are based on the electron. All their preparations will be for naught, and they will right. be sitting there with their finger up their nose or some other place, not knowing what to do because nobody's paying attention to them. Right. That's what they're afraid of. It will basically be not an extinction level event. But a globalism ex- 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 extinction level event. In other words, okay. it's going to end. Right. Globalism will end instantly. The moment that blackout happens, then globalism is dead. Right, and, they, and it's the one thing that they think that's going to bring on their success 
but it's the one thing that'll destroy it. Exactly. Now, the population is prepped. This is actually a good thing, because in a way, what will happen if the population is prepped, if we have the power grid protected, and we do have some destruction of satellite communications and so on, the prepped population will rise up out of this and will throw off the bands of globalist bankers that control and create ghost money and literally destroy our value of our property and everything and steal everything in sight. And uh, people will survive. We human races survive. Look at the ancient human race surviving all kinds of catac- cataclysms. I'm sure our civilization has survived some very nasty things over many centuries, many oh, thousands yeah. of years. Oh yeah, absolutely, they've survived. And uh, uh, the Colburn, one of the books I referenced in my second book, uh, Atlantis to Tesla: The Colburn Connection, it starts by talking about the second uh, the second generation of man, so to speak, or the second renovation of this planet. And it's caused by large, what they call sky monsters, the comets. But right. uh, the big comets, not the little Halley's Comet poofball yeah, comets, yeah. but the big you're ones. Talking about the, you're talking about big ones like this one that's going to pass through the sun in November uh, that is uh, 26 kilometers across. These are, well, it's, uh, I, I think when they say 26 kilometers, multiply by 100 and you'll be more correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, but 20, 2,600. Now, 2,600 kilometers means it's about the size of our moon is what you're talking about. Exactly, yeah, the nucleus. And uh, it's one of the biggest lies at NASA is the size of nuclei. Right, uh, right. It's traditionally been, and I, like I say, uh, but it's funny to see the contradictions they come up. With there's a comet uh, coming in now that's going to come very near Mars called that uh, just recently discovered 2013A1. Right. And, and when, don't they have a name for that called like J stars or something? Uh, yeah, it's uh, discovered by the uh, the Star uh, Automated Search uh, Telescope. Right. But uh, Pan stars. Yeah, Pan stars. That's it. Yeah, but what's funny is they said the nucleus of that is 50 kilometers across. And Whoa. they said hale Bop was 42 kilometers. Well, wait a minute. This pan star that's supposed to come close to Mars is teeny-weeny, and hale Bop was a big, so wouldn't that make hale Bop much bigger than 42 and not smaller? You see, they can't keep their story straight, just like any yeah, liar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, uh, they, they get their lies tangled like a Gordian knot. Yeah. Amazing. The year of the comet... And the year of the revelation that the comet says, the Vatican has said of their Mount Graham binocular telescope, they're aware that this is a time things are really going to start rocking and rolling. But once it can, Hispanic populations are by and large more conservative than them. Democrats, so I, it's not a problem. Something easy to solve. Welcome back, and Professor McKinney, this year, what do you expect to happen? Because we have three major events. What are the dates when they're expected to pass? And if you look at the trajectory plans, are they near, for example, if you could calculate out the major hot spots of the sun, the solar disk, where these uh, basically, solar storms are going to occur. Has anybody done computer simulations to say when I turn the sun a certain direction or angle, and I see the approaching uh, trajectory of these giant, and very large, and we talk about this one in November, 2,600 kilometers across? That's a big damn comet. Uh, somebody must have a pretty good <coughs> idea <coughs> based on the trajectory if you're within the blast angle. Uh, we solar coronal mass ejection of quadrillions of tons of plasma and protons. Uh, has anybody done a, a, a war game simulation or a computer simulation to say, yeah, well, we're looking at, you know, let's say solar sunspot, air, whatever, 1976, and we know that when the sun is turned on a specific date and, the, and, this, and this giant comet passes on a certain angle or trajectory, it's likely that when the explosion occurs and the plasma discharge from the sun, that were within an angle of say 33 degrees or 30 degrees of the of the solar explosion, and we're likely to keep a piece of it. You know, uh, has anybody done that kind of analysis? Well, here's the problem: even if uh, you could calculate exactly when the discharge might occur, say between a comet and the sun, yeah, uh, there's no way of knowing where it's going to hit. And additionally, the solar flares 
CMEs, et cetera, that come out of the sun, it might come out the other side of the sun. It might be a total coronal mass ejection where it comes off the entire surface, or it might come out at a skew angle. So the, these things are very, very, well, I'd say literally at this point, impossible to predict. In other words, uh, when you're talking about total solar, you mean talking about not just directed in one little spot that blows up, but literally the entire surface of the sun has a major rupture, is what you're saying. Lifting off in, in a total solar coronal mass ejection, uh, which are fairly rare. But the, the point is that even yeah. uh, with directed solar flares, they might come out at an angle, and then they weave their way through the solar magnetic field out in space. So they kind of come out like a big curveball. And, uh, ah, so, okay. So you're sitting on a pitcher's mound, which is on the sun. They throw out this curveball, and all of a sudden it's like a knuckleball, and unfortunately it crosses center plate right by the Earth, and we just get clipped by it. Yeah, and so there's no real way of understanding. But I'll, Yeah, I'll so, you, so that's particularly disturbing for the so-called globalists because they don't have the advanced science that would be necessary centuries or millennia from now to be able to yeah. predict exactly if these things happen, if we're likely to get hit by one of these objects. That's why I've been saying that they're going to do a controlled false flag power outage. Because yes, yeah, so we know that the very first control. thing that the globalists will do if there's an uh, airborne plague or any cause of terrorism, the very first thing I, meant, I confronted on March 1, 2001, the FEMA director, while at the podium, the very first thing they're going to do, and I'm going to repeat this so everybody gets it, is to turn off the power grid. And that I have information corroborating from the United States, Canada, and Australia. Right, the exactly. very first thing they're going to do is shut off the grid. Right, and, and so then they can control it. They can turn it on when they need it or direct it to where they need it uh, and turn it off so you can't use it. Uh, and by the way, they have to do this. They have to do it anyway. If there is a CME, one of the ways to at least partially protect the power grid is just completely shut it off. So right. if they and think there's connected. a high danger zone, they're going to shut it off just to even protect the step-down transformers that are not totally fried. So in other words, if the power grid goes completely out, it's in advance of a CME because they expect it on its way. And it's almost like a P wave from an earthquake. They'll be able to see a surge of ultraviolet light and specific frequencies off the sun, which happen here in eight and a half minutes, long before the protons and plasma arrive, which will fry the power grid. So they get it up to two to four days before the actual grid gets blasted to pieces. So they have plenty of advanced warning to actually shut off their grid. And I tell people the best way to tell that is to simply have an ultraviolet light detector outside your home. And if your ultraviolet light detector has a surge in radiation, it means that you've had a blast of radiation because every time a CME happens, the first thing that happens is a surge in the higher energy ultraviolet light, which will be picked up by a simple UV light detector. Uh, yeah, the, the, the simple solution is that they will pull power, control power outage, and then blame it on a CME. Right. So that's that's what I'm expecting because the, the waiting for a CME to hit, and then having like very partial power outage, having power in some places totally uncontrolled by them is not acceptable. That's why they have to, and that's why NASA for a number of years now has been pounding on this. The solar maximum, I saw an announcement, 2013, NASA says, we're going to have a power outage due to a CME. Well, gee, uh, what does that tell you? It tells you they're going to turn it off in advance because they're going to see these early signs of the CME is coming in, say, two days. Uh -huh. And exactly. then they're going to shut it off, <clears throat> supposedly one to protect it, but also to protect their own hides because if they don't have the satellite communication the Internet, the gross money systems, and all the other cybernetic connections, the New World Order and the globalism is dead. It's gone. And so yeah. they want to preserve their power control system, which basically is cybernetic and digital. And, and they know they that if they can control it, the story, they can control the news stories, and everybody right. can think, They can oh, even maintain power it. outages in areas to make sure they maintain the level of chaos to cause enough destruction of the public, because people will beg to pass those guns over for bread. People will beg to get an RFID chip to be tracked. People will beg to have the government take control because they can't take the public on directly. So they have to set up another scenario so they can get control of the public. Right, or or have neighbors tell on neighbors, oh, this neighbor is not cooperating with the uh, policy and uh, whatever. It's it's going to get real uh, pre-World War II Germanish. 
<laughs> if you want to say that. Yeah, in other words, this is going to be like the Spitznoss of each Germany. Um, so, in other words, a high likelihood of this this year or next. Uh, I I, am a, I really think this year. I think the globalists. And here's what: uh, if you have a, a scared animal, and I would like it to any kind of scared little animal, uh, right. they're going to lash out and do something. And so they can't wait because the public is waking up and learning what the story is. So they can't wait any longer simply because the knowledge level of the public is growing at too fast right. a rate. Well, what I tell people personally is, number one, get a Generac generator, either I have propane, 1,000, 500-gallon uh, propane, get a V3 solar, which will be coming out in the next few months, probably by the summer, a V3 solar solar backup. You can store it in lithium pyrophosphate batteries. And we're also looking for a manufacturer of an air compressor. My nephew actually is a senior scientist at a company in Silicon Valley where they have these for large power corporations that can store hundreds of kilowatts just as compressed air. And uh, so there's simple solutions to decentralize the grid. There should be decentralized natural gas and generators, and we should stop relying on nuclear power and the conventional nuclear power we have now. If we're going to replace it, we need to replace it with pebble bed reactors and dangerous reactors, and we get, need to get the nuclear waste off of these sites so that if we have a station blackout, we don't end up with old-style reactors releasing massive amounts of radiation. <laughs> this, yeah, a lot of people don't realize that the reactors cool the waste. And if right, and if you have a sun blackout, you're going to get a massive release of radiation. It'll be yeah. like a nuclear bomb hit. And these, by the way, these these nuclear reactors are great targets for terrorism. If you want to cause trouble, for example, in New York City, rather than bringing down the World Trade Center towers, it would have been much smarter to hit the Indian Point reactor. If you wanted to do something, you fly in a drone, a small aircraft, you carry it along with a lot of weapons and bombs on it, and you fly it directly into the Indian Point reactor in Kabul. You make the northeast United States a radioactive dead zone. You don't can just you bring down the trade a, zone. Yeah. Can you imagine a technology and the engineers that put this together in which you have to cool with the energy you're generating, you have to cool the waste, and as time goes on, your, your proportion of your energy used to cool the used-up fuel is growing and growing and growing to the point where there's a point of no return. Yeah, no, it's and stupid, then, isn't it? And then, is it? And this is the stupidest we, way as to boil water with yeah. radioactive decay. It's crazy. Yeah, and, and then eventually you got to shut that nuclear reactor down. Now you have no way to cool the waste that's sitting there. Yeah, it was shut down because you have a station blackout. You now have a hot situation releasing massive amounts of radiation with no way to stop it. And if you yeah, lose containment, you can now have criticality. We now know that at Fukushima Daiichi, they had nuclear explosions, which blew the top off of reactor number three, which is the MOX plutonium flu reactor that was building plutonium detonators for nuclear weapons. Examine the science yourself. Look at the, the information that Dr. McKenney has on his website, jmccsci.com. Don't believe anything we said. Research it yourself. Get quiet, go pray, be a prepper, take action, don't believe a damn thing the so-called media or other shows tell you. This is where Dr. McKinney's show and John Moore's show is where you hear the facts.